Oh, um, g'day, uh, welcome to Australian English with Jason. I'm playing with my fidget spinner. Uh, a fidget spinner's suddenly appeared from nowhere sometime last year. Every shop started selling fidget spinners and everybody decided that they needed one to play with like I'm doing now because they're fun they have these pretty lights and that's all they do now they are much cheaper than they used to be last year they are much harder to find than they used to be. They will go in the back of people's cupboards. And when next time we're cleaning out those cupboards, we'll pick it up, think for a second, what's that thing, and then throw it out. Fidget spinners are what we call a fad. Something that is popular for a little while and then people stop being interested. If you took your fidget spinner to class with you, your teacher would take it away from you and give it back at the end of the class. But that doesn't mean that there are no fads in your English class. When I went to school, conjunctions were just conjunctions. A few years ago, someone decided to put conjunctions into two groups, real conjunctions and fanboys. A fanboy is a type of conjunction which makes both halves of a sentence equally important. So you can still emphasize something by putting it at the end of a sentence and letting the full stop be a pause where you let the last thing you said affect somebody. But the other way, so they say, to emphasize something is to use a fanboy and then go straight on and say something else without stopping. I've never wasted my time learning the seven fanboys, but I found a rap song which says that the fanboys are for and or but yes so and if you don't well let me go through each of these in turn. For is a preposition. I make these videos for students. I bought a fidget spinner for myself. 
So why do they say that four is a conjunction? Well, it used to be a conjunction. A word which we never use anymore because it has been replaced by another word is called an archaism. The word that has replaced for as a conjunction is because. Some churches still use a version of the Bible it's called the Authorised Version. It was published by the English King James in the year 1611. Let me show you how one sentence was translated from Greek to English in this Bible 407 years ago. Then I'll show you how the same sentence was translated in this Bible 25 years ago. First, the old version. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Your dictionary will not have an entry for ye or establish or draweth or nigh. Now here is the new version. You too must be patient. Do not give up hope because the Lord is coming soon. There is no better reason to use for as a conjunction than ye establish draweth or not. There is only one time that anyone in the last two or three hundred years has used for as a conjunction. And that is in fanboys classes. The next fanboy is and. I went to the bank and I went to the library. We saw in the first video on conjunctions that we can take out all of the words we repeat except the article. I went to the bank and the library. The second sentence isn't emphasising the library. But if somebody says, no, I don't believe that you went to the library, you only went to the bank. That's when I would say, I went to the bank and I went to the library. That's emphasising the library. But what if you didn't go to the bank? That's when you'd use the next fanboy. I went to neither the bank nor the library. I neither withdrew some money nor borrowed a book. Neither goes in front of the verb withdrew because we use a different verb in both halves of the sentence. Went in the first sentence is the same verb for both 
halves. Went to the bank, went to the library. The more common way of saying it today is I didn't go to the bank or the library either. Notice the word is not neither, it's either. I didn't withdraw any money or borrow a book either. Notice some important differences between those sentences, especially the verbs. I went is positive simple past. I didn't go is negative simple past. Same with withdrew, I didn't withdraw. Borrowed becoming borrow. The didn't is connected to both verbs, withdraw and borrow. Also, the word some on the top becomes any on the bottom. The next two fanboys we covered in conjunctions one and two. Or tells us a few ways that the idea could go. But sends the idea in a different direction from what we expected. So now we come to the strange fanboy yet. I'll show you every way I know of using yet in English. Firstly, there is yet when we don't know whether something is past or future. We know that a man is going to be here. So we say, has he come yet? If he isn't here, we answer that question, no, he hasn't yet. Or, no, not yet. So that means he will come in the future. If he is here, we answer, yes, he has. We will not say, yes, he has yet. The second way of using yet is to show that the second part of a sentence is very unexpected. Some people use fidget spinners in class and yet say that they are good students. Good students don't play with toys in class, they listen to the teacher. It was raining heavily and yet we played football anyway. Do you remember from conjunctions one when I showed you another sentence which had the word anyway at the end? This is another way we could say the sentence expressing surprise, something we never expected, something we didn't think would happen. 
although some people use fidget spinners in class, they say that they are good students. It was raining heavily, but we played football anyway. The other way to use yet is something that I would normally leave until the most advanced level of English teaching. It's called a discourse marker. A discourse marker is a special type of sentence adverb. One simpler subset of discourse markers, which you might have seen, are time connectives. That is when first this happened, then something else happened. Next, another thing happened. Finally, the last thing happened. First, next, then, finally, are time connectives, and they are one of the simpler types of discourse marker. I wrote two paragraphs. The first paragraph is reasons that I didn't think Fidget Spinner was worth buying. Fidget Spinners were expensive. They didn't do anything useful. They were just a waste of time. The next paragraph starts with yet which means now I'm going to say why I do want to buy one. Yet the lights looked so pretty. Lots of other people had them. I didn't have anything else to do, so I bought one to play with. Even there, as the first word in a paragraph. As often as not, yet is and yet. The last fanboy is so. I talked about so in conjunctions one. It is the opposite of because. So gives a result. Um, after that first video on conjunctions, some people asked me, why is so sometimes followed by that? That's a very good question. So that means what you really want to happen. I went to the shop so I don't have any money left. I don't like having no money. I'd rather have some money. I had to buy things. I went to the shop so that I could buy the things I needed. I really needed to buy those things. I really wanted to buy those things. That's why I say, so that I could buy the things I need. I played with my fidget spinner, so I didn't hear what the teacher said. The result of playing with my fidget spinner in class is that I didn't hear what the teacher said. Why did I play with my fidget spinner?
what did I want to do with my fidget spinner? I played with my fidget spinner so that I could see the pretty lights. My advice to you, if you have a teacher who thinks you should learn fanboys, is use them as much as you need to in class. Don't use for or yet as conjunctions outside class. And don't act as though putting something in the middle of a sentence will emphasize it. The end of the sentence is where you emphasize things. Once you've outside the class, try to talk more like a native speaker. That's when this is going. It's finished. Every fad ends up like this. The fidget spinner is now finished. And this series on conjunctions is now finished. But Australian English with Jason is a long way from being finished. So until next time, hooroo.